Greetings to you all from the University of Maine System Board of Trustees. I'm Jim Irwin, Chair of the Board. Once again, we find our university's most important events compromised by a viral pandemic. For those of you who may have endured the disease or have family members who did, please accept our sympathies and wishes for a return to good health. While this pandemic is not quite ready to let go, to succumb to the laws of epidemiology, neither are we succumbing to the pandemic, not by a long shot. Instead, we gather by virtual means to do what it is so important for us to do, to take the time to celebrate the achievements of our 4,000 degree recipients across all our campuses. At this time last year, even as we celebrated with amazement the ability of students, faculty, and staff to turn on a dime from in-person to 100% remote learning in a matter of days, and to press ahead to finish the year's work, we looked back and said, what just hit us? At that point, it would have been easy to get discouraged, to step back, to hold out for the experience you thought you had signed up for. And yet, a remarkable 87% of our students continued from fall to spring, compared to 75% a year earlier when there was no pandemic. The board is so very impressed by and proud of the individual decisions and commitments this number reflects. Once again, students, families, faculty, and staff have shown their main bona fides, pulling together with tremendous resilience, adaptability, patience, cooperation, and persistence. So this year, even as we remark with astonishment on the emergence in real time of a very different higher ed experience, many of the attributes of which will stay with us long after COVID departs from center stage, we look back and think, what a long, strange trip it's been. But commencement, of course, is also a time to look forward. So let me take a moment to do that. First, remember as you carry this experience with you that pandemics like this one are very uncommon. They're like 100-year floods. We don't really engineer our institutions to withstand them, and we have to adapt on the fly. I hope you will draw from your triumph over this level of adversity an extra measure of confidence in the next phases of your lives. Second, many of you have spent the last four or so years acquiring the skills and knowledge needed for a specific vocation. But some of you have not. You've entered college not knowing you needed to explore, to experiment. Maybe you know now, maybe you're not there yet. But whatever your path, the one acquisition that should be common to you all should be the ability to think critically and for yourself. We're bombarded regularly from every direction with carefully packaged messages purporting to distill the complexities of our society and even human nature itself into conveniently simple memes. These memes get repeated enough to become accepted as fact. Often they are anything but. For example, when you hear follow the science, stop and question. Science is a process of inquiry, not a magical incantation that confers legitimacy on a theory or a contention. Ask, what is the science underlying the command to follow it? And when you hear, do the math, well, that's generally a good idea, but try to make sure it's the right math. Your world is going to be awash in data and data analyses, and they will not all be trustworthy. Try to understand what's behind them. Try to satisfy yourself that it's the right math. Critical thinking, whether it's following the science, doing the math, or some other form of due diligence, will rarely provide certitude. Often, however, it can lead you to an understanding of probabilities that help you make good decisions. If your university experience has given you the ability and the inclination to approach important decisions with that kind of thinking, then we did our job. I want to conclude by looking ahead for our system as well. The pandemic caused us to make sudden and extensive modifications to how we operate at great cost so that you and your fellow students, faculty, and staff would be able to continue your education safely and largely uninterrupted. At the same time, we've tried very hard to keep our eyes on and over the horizon. 
We have many challenges, and we are applying our best critical thinking skills to identify the best strategies to overcome those challenges so that improving student success through better accessibility, affordability, relevance, and efficiency can be our everyday focus. But in addition to these challenges, we have many opportunities as well. A new engineering facility at the University of Maine nearing completion. Construction about to begin on a student success center and the first residence halls for the University of Southern Maine's Portland campus. A new accreditation model that fosters collaboration across the system to make all of our programs widely accessible and to improve academic efficiency and an unprecedented gift from the Harold Alfon Foundation that includes creation of a system-wide college of engineering, computing, and information science, funding for three system-wide initiatives to improve student success, and the completion of the University of Maine Graduate and Professional Center and related plans for investment in our law school. I'm proud to say that despite the disruption, we have persevered together. So once again, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, congratulations for staying the course in a time of unprecedented challenge and change, and best wishes for what lies ahead. Thank you for inviting me to this graduation ceremony. To all of the staff and faculty and officers of the University of Maine Machias, thank you for the assistance you have lent to the students who we, whose graduation we mark today. To the students and your families for all the work and all the care that has gone into your achievement. Thank you for staying with us and getting your degree. But I also want to challenge you your success has been brought about not only because of your hard work, but the contributions of so many others in supporting and building our institutions and our communities. As you go forward to use your degree in your future life, I also charge you to find ways to give back to that broader community, to make sure that others have the opportunities that you've been given. Most importantly, I challenge you to use your degrees to the greatest extent of your ability uh, and I congratulate you for the work that's gone into this degree. Greetings. I'm Joan Farini Mundy, President of the University of Maine and our regional campus, the University of Maine at Machias. I also serve as Vice Chancellor for Research and Innovation for the University of Maine system. Welcome to the University of Maine at Machias Spring 2021 Virtual Commencement Ceremony. The University of Maine at Machias recognizes that it is located in the homeland of the Passamaquoddy tribe, where issues of water and territorial rights and encroachment upon sacred sites are ongoing. Passamaquoddy homeland is connected to the other Wabanaki tribal nations, the Penobscot, Maliseet, and Mi'kmaq, through kinship, alliances, and diplomacy. The university also recognizes that the Passamaquoddy tribe and the other Wabanaki tribal nations are distinct, sovereign, legal, and political entities with their, with their own powers of self-governance and self-determination. Today, I'm excited and honored to welcome you to virtual commencement for the University of Maine at Machias graduating classes of 2020 and 2021. I wish that we could all be together celebrating this milestone event in a traditional commencement setting on the beautiful UMM campus. But, I am pleased that we can gather virtually to congratulate this year's University of Maine at Machias graduates, as well as the six members of the class of 2020 who are taking part today. I am also grateful that people from around the state, country, and world can join us for this virtual event. Today, we recognize and honor your determination, resilience, and kindness to one another in continuing to pursue academic excellence and complete the degree of your choice. Congratulations. I also want to acknowledge and thank the many family members, partners, and friends who have supported our graduates on their journeys. I know the graduates join me in celebrating your dedication and, for many, sacrifices to provide them with the resources and help along the way that they needed. Family and friends, I know that you are proud of these graduates and their accomplishments. We are too. 
Since my first time on campus, I was struck by the closely knit community feeling at UMaine Machias, and I have seen it in every visit and every virtual meeting since. There is no question that at UMaine Machias, the students are at the center. I wish to thank the faculty, staff, and administrators who show unwavering commitment and who are the architects of the tremendous support network that we all enjoy at UMaine Machias. I would like to start by making you three promises. First, there will be no Dr. Seuss quotes or any quotes in this speech. I am not going to end this by telling you that you can move mountains or by pointing out the obvious and saying that you have brains in your head and feet in your shoes. And no, we're not counting that as a quote. My second promise is that I absolutely will not, under any circumstance, name the one thing that has ruined so much for all of us over the last 14 months. This is a day for celebrating everything we are and have yet to become, not a time for mourning lost opportunities and ruined experiences. Finally, I promise that this will not be a very long speech. I hope that what I have to say will mean a lot, rather than actually being a lot. The highlight of my time here at UMM was working as an SI leader and later a tutor. I mean it when I say that I would have sacrificed my soul to get some of my peers through statistics, but of course the one thing I wouldn't do was give them the answers though I was bribed on more than one occasion. It's while helping my peers through the bane of their existence, statistics of course, that I realized for the first time that education won't be just a hastily chosen convenient career for me. It's my calling. I am meant to design, teach, assess, revise, and teach again. I am meant to help students who struggle, lead them from where they've stay strayed, rejoice when they finally, finally reach something that even remotely approaches an understanding and encourage them always. I am meant for this, and I would not have known it without the SI program, the peers I worked with, and the staff and faculty who kept the program running. This would not be a graduation speech if I didn't thank those who made my time here not only possible, but worthwhile. I will forego the section where one would typically thank parents, grandparents, and other relatives. I'll be thanking them in person shortly. To start, I would like to thank Garrett Lee for his continuous guidance, support, and knowledge. His instruction and feedback has greatly influenced my philosophy on education and, to an extent, life in general. I would like to thank Medea Steinman, Chris Abandonado, and the faculty members who served as directors of the SI program for not only providing me with a job, but an experience that made me both a better student and a better leader. The growth that I experienced as a person and an educator thanks to that program cannot be overstated. Thanks also to Lori McBride for giving me a place to belong after the SI program ended and for making my days in the study center happy ones, to Bonnie Fortini for her wisdom and advice, and to Peggy Slicer and Dorsey Hill for the shenanigans that made my time at admissions memorable. Finally, thank you to the friends and many acquaintances that I've made over the last three years for giving me the stories that I will tell about my college days for the rest of my life. Those who took intro to theater with me understand the comedic value that tales about Olive Garden breadsticks will have for the rest of my life. <laughs> and I won't be able to speak about intramural sports without talking about last fall, when I played football for the first time and executed the perfect block to protect my teammates' pass, accidentally, I might add. Everyone who tolerated my lack of knowledge about the game, but hyped that fortuitous play up like it was a matter of talent and not a happy accident deserves a shout out to match the rest. Now that everyone has been properly thanked and acknowledged, I would like to present my classmates with three challenges that I hope you'll take to heart and complete before the end of your lives. First, I challenge you to measure your success with something other than the amount of money in your pocket. You can work your whole life away and become a billionaire. Wouldn't that be nice? But you won't be truly satisfied if you constrain yourself to that cycle of being born, working, and dying. Instead, measure your success by the amount of effort you put into everything you do. This way, if you always work your hardest, you'll never be upset by what others call failure. And I'll let you in on a little secret. If you're in the right line of work, your best should almost always be enough. Secondly, I challenge you to find happiness. Seek it out. Look for it. Don't stop until you find it. You won't find happiness in everything you do or everyone you meet, but you will find it somewhere. Maybe you get a job that you really like, or adopt a pet, like a dog, or a lizard, or a plant, or a rock. Maybe you take up a hobby, like running, or painting, or something so totally ridiculous you wouldn't dare talk about it with anyone, like 
dressing up as Britney Spears and having private concerts in your living room. I don't know. I don't care what you do, as long as you're happy and you didn't get there at the expense of someone else. Have fun and always make sure there's a little happiness in your life, no matter where you find it. My last challenge for you isn't about you directly, but if you do it right, it'll benefit you just as much. I challenge you to give back to your community. You might end up settling down right where you grew up or somewhere entirely different. You might never settle down at all, committing yourself to the life of a traveler, a wanderer, or a vagabond. Whatever community you find yourself in, if the impact it has on you is positive, even in the tiniest way, give back to it. Offer to run errands for a neighbor, clean up the garbage in public spaces or along the stretch of road, shovel someone's driveway in the winter or mow their lawn in the summer for free or near to it, join a charitable group, service organization, or a fire department. Do something for someone around you without expecting anything in return. It's those acts of kindness and voluntary service that mean the most, and in my experience, are the most fulfilling. Be successful, be happy, and be kind. I wish you all the best. Nothing more, nothing less. Hello to the class of 2021. For many of us, we never thought we'd finally be graduating from UMM, but for others, it flew right by. Throughout the last four years, we have seen many changes. UMM has put an impression on all of us in some way. I remember arriving at UMM in 2017. I remember getting into a school van with a group of people that I didn't even know to go clean cemetery stones and to later to find out that most of the people in that van became my lifelong friends. One thing that we can all walk away from with Machias is the long lasting friendships that we have gained. Many of us became close with our professors, staff, and even the lunch ladies. We look to them for guidance, support, and their humor. I'll never forget walking into the cafe every day and seeing all the lunch ladies there ready to greet us with the biggest smiles. Between us here, they have told me that our class have made one of the biggest impressions on them, and that is something they are going to miss every day. From going on whale watches with Dr. Krause and her pointing out different birds on random patches of rocks in the ocean, to talking to Dr. Jones about plants and his dogs that he loves so much. Sitting in LaBreeze's class and talking about ghost stories are going on canoe trips with Karen Beef Tank at Six Mile. These will be many things that we will miss. Although we've had many fun memories, I would like to commemorate my best friend, Michael Kosky. Mike passed away unexpectedly May 12th of 2019. He was supposed to graduate with the class of 2021. I remember sitting with him that day at the 2019 graduation when the Ivy Reuter got up to speak, Mike looked at me and told me that I would one day be speaking to our graduating class. It's funny because here I am today having the chance to fulfill that. I would like to remember Mike full of energy that he always had. One of the biggest and best examples of this is him through his attachment to any speaker system, especially his bump box. He carried this around with him to every game or outside event. You definitely knew if he's at the soccer games in the fall. The speaker would be jamming. The crowd would be dancing at the soccer games. And there was never a dull moment with him. Mike was the only RA to ever get a noise complaint. Even though there was a sad time, Machias had made some of the greatest memories. And I will forever be grateful for all of them. I want to thank everybody that gave me the chance to speak on this special day. Machias will always have a special place in my heart. And I hope in many of yours it will too. Good luck to all of you in your future journeys. I would like to leave you with this saying that I've heard since I started college. Every opportunity that is handed to you, grab it. Because the more you try, the better you will do. Congrats, guys. Cheers to the class of 2021.
So now I'm going to read the, uh, the names, the degrees, and the honors of the 2020 class uh, graduates. Don Claire Lee Johnson. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts in Psychology and Community Studies, summa cum laude, valedictorian 2020. Queen Nam Park, Bachelor's, Bachelor of Arts in Psychology and Community Studies, cum laude, Senior Watch Award 2020. <laughs> Nigel Stephen Pingree, Bachelor of Arts in English, Creative Writing and Book Arts, summa cum laude. <laughs> Skyler Autumn Mushlet, Bachelor of Science in Marine Biology, magna cum laude. Marlene Ann Sprague, Bachelor of College Studies. <laughs> the following certificates are from 2021. Bailey Elizabeth Alley, Introduction to College Studies Certificate. Chloe Ann Elizabeth Cruz, Becoming a Teacher Certificate and Introduction to College Study Certificate. <laughs> Cynthia Lee Dupee, Family Study Certificate. <laughs> Christina Marie Greenlaw, Family Study Certificate. Gabrielle Eden Morang, Introduction to College Study Certificate. Amanda Elaine Quinn, Family Study Certificate. Megan Michelle Rosila, Family Study Certificate. John Michael Robinson, Introduction to College certificate, Study Certificate. The 2021 Associates of Science uh, degrees are next, and the first is Hunter Jefferson Clark, an Associates in Business and Entrepreneurial Studies with Honors. <laughs> Danisha Lynn Lank, Associates of Science in Business and, Entrep and Entrepreneurial Studies. Laney Ray Perry, Associates in Science in Business and Entrepreneurial Studies with Honors. Christy M. Sinford, Associates in Science in Business and Entrepreneurial Studies with Honors. Next are the 2021 Bachelor of Arts. Catherine Burton Atkinson, Bachelor of Arts in Psychology and Community Studies and Associates Arts in Liberal Studies, and the mother of our next uh, graduate. <laughs> who is Spencer Grace Atkinson, Bachelor of Arts in Creative Arts, cum laude. Patricia Lee Bill, Bachelor's of Arts in Psychology and Community Studies, cum laude. Thank you. <laughs> Abigail Catherine Lee Chadbourne, 
Bachelor of Arts in Biology. <laughs> Chloe Natasha Galka, Bachelor of Arts in Psychology and Community Studies, magna cum laude. Teresa Victoria Galanti, Bachelor of Arts in Psychology and Community Studies and Mental Health and Rehabilitation Technician and Community Certificate, Magna Cum Laude, Senior Watch Award 2021. <laughs> Tony Marie Gelati, Bachelor of Arts in Psychology and Community Studies. Berlin Marie Haupt, Bachelor of Arts in Creative Arts, cum laude. <laughs> Mindy J. Henderson, Bachelor of Arts in Psychology and Community Studies, summa cum laude. Kyle John Little, Bachelor of Arts in Biology. <laughs> Caitlin Michelle Lyons, Bachelor of Arts in Biology, magna cum laude. Mary Elizabeth Marble, Bachelor of Arts in Creative Arts, summa cum laude. <laughs> Hannah Eve Martel, Bachelor of Arts in Biology. <laughs> Next are our Bachelors of Science. Alexander James Blackie, Bachelor of Science in Recreation and Tourism Management, cum laude. Kayla Elizabeth Cosmo, Bachelor of Science in Elementary Education, cum laude. Lexi Mariah Daggett, Bachelor of Science Environmental Studies, Ivy Orator 2021. Andrew Raymond Duvall Jr., Bachelor of Science in Marine Biology, magna cum laude. Daniel Thomas Galanti, Bachelor of Science in Marine Biology, summa cum laude, Senior Watch Award, 2021. <laughs> Tracy Jo Guptel, Bachelor of Science in Recreation and Tourism Management, summa cum laude. <laughs> Sarah E. Halperin, Bachelor of Science in Marine Biology, cum laude. Celia Jellison, Bachelor of Science in Environmental Studies. <laughs> Kaylin Louise Layton, Bachelor of Science in Elementary Education. <laughs> Jesus Jairo Lobriel Reyes. Bachelor of Science in Environmental Studies. <laughs> Carol Ellen Smith, Bachelor of Science in Secondary Education, summa cum laude, valedictorian 2021. Allison Elizabeth Wilson, Bachelor of Science in Education, magna cum laude.
Next are our Bachelor's of College Studies. Melissa Hope Bailey, Bachelor of College Studies, summa cum laude. Dana Lynn Barker, Bachelor of College Studies. Patricia Lynn Blanchard Beal, Bachelor of College Studies, Magna Cum Laude. Sharon Marie Davenport, Bachelor of College Studies, Cum Laude. Avery Nelson Davis, Bachelor of College Studies. <laughs> Monica Lee Jamison, Bachelor of College Studies. Roseanne Marion Cowell, Bachelor of College Studies. Now I have two names left and one person. And you're wearing a mask. Yeah. Brittany. Mystery solved. <laughs> Brittany Renee White, Bachelor of College Studies.
As your president, I have the distinct honor of giving the final charge to you as you go out into the world to do great things. We all will look forward to hearing about your achievements in the future. The college experience can be exciting, scary, fun-filled, and even magical at times. Everyone experiences college differently. But for most, importantly, it marks a special time in life for exploring, creating, discovering, and experiencing new things. You have made lasting friendships and, I suspect, learned about who you are and what you are capable of accomplishing. Because, in addition to completing college, you are doing so in a global pandemic. Throughout your college career, especially during the last three semesters, you have had no other option than to be flexible, to pivot, dig in, overcome, persevere, demonstrate your grit. Along the way, you've succeeded in many ways, great and small, and you've had hard moments as well. You've demonstrated maturity and adaptability while enrolled in a mixture of in-person, blended, online asynchronous and web synchronous courses. I also appreciate that you have done your part to keep yourselves, your peers, your family, and your community healthy during these extraordinary times. You took part in COVID-19 testing. In 2021 alone, more than 1,200 tests have been conducted on the Machias campus. And you have worn face coverings, observed distancing, and observed gathering size rules. As president, I could not be more proud of all of you at the University of Maine at Machias. Congratulations to the 102 members of the class of 2021, which includes people from Connecticut, Maine, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, New York, and Rhode Island. You have studied the decline of soft shell clam landings on the Maine coast. Student taught at Washington Academy served as an emergency medical technician, been a peer mentor and tutor, volunteered with the Community Caring Collaborative, interned with the Headwaters Lake Protection Program at Rangeley Lakes Heritage Trust, worked with pre-kindergarten children at Callis Alternative School, served as a volunteer firefighter, been members of SHIELD, student health, inclusion, education, leadership, and diversity, and the Outing Club, participated in the Margaret Chase Smith Policy Center's main new leadership program, and so, so much more. My charge to you is simple. Congratulations. You have already changed the world. You are ready to take on whatever the future brings. You are ready to define tomorrow. So go forward and make a difference.